Grimsley makes his way to the mound. The Reds with Grimsley and bench. The infield, Perez at first, Morgan at second, Cheney at short, Menke at third. Rose will be in left, Bobby Tolan in center, and Cesar Geronimo in right. Ross Grimsley, he was mad about not starting the second game in the playoffs. He thought he was going to pitch last Sunday against Pittsburgh. It was either going to be Grimsley or Billingham, said Sparky Anderson, before game one. Then Don Gullett lost game one. The Reds thought they would have an advantage by sending a left-hander against Pittsburgh. And they decided to go with Billingham, holding yeah. Grimsley off until game four. The lineup for the A's, Bert Campanaris will lead off at shortstop. Matty Alou in right field, hitting second. Joe Rudy, the left fielder. Mike Epstein in the cleanup spot at first. Then Sal Bando at third. George Hendrick in center, hitting sixth. The catcher, yesterday's big hero, Gene Tennis. Dick Green at second. And the pitcher, Jim Catfish Hunter. 21-game winner this year and a 21-game winner in 1971. Ross Grimsley loosening up. Tony, you watch Grimsley throw the two-hitter against the Pirates in probably his best outing ever in Game 4. He had good stuff that day, and the ball that Clemente hit for a home run was actually a fastball almost over Roberto's head. I was speaking with Larry Shepard, the pitching coach for Cincinnati before the ball game, and he says that Grimsley probably has the best all-around stuff on the staff. His fastball is just a shade beneath Don Gullett's, and he has to establish his curveball early in the ballgame. Get it over the plate, and that will make his fastball more effective. For the A's in the first inning, Bert Campanaris, then Alou and Rudy. Campanaris two for three yesterday. The A's had four hits, Campanaris with two, tennis with two. And the first pitch is strike. Campanaris at 240 during the year. Eight home runs, 32 runs batted in. He'll be suspended the first week of the regular season, 1973, eligible in the World Series. One and one. He expected to be booed yesterday. He was. He hopes they die out. He says, I've apologized. I was wrong. I was sorry. Now I've just got to concentrate on playing baseball. One one pitch is fouled away. One and two. Campanaris, born in Cuba, living now in Missouri, has a second cousin who plays in the outfield with the Cubs, Jose Cardinal. Fans might notice, Al, the A's are wearing different colored uniforms. The green shirts trimmed now in uh, gold. Yesterday they had the gold trimmed in green. They have three different colored uh, uniforms. Down low, ball two, two and two the count. Jim Honacek is the plate umpire. Mel Steiner at first, Frank Umon at second, Bob Engel at third. Bill Haller down the left field line, and Chris Pelicutis down the right field line. Fouled back in the count holds. Two and two. Campanaris ordinarily, Al, is a pretty good fastball hitter. Grimsley looks like he's throwing the ball by him. He's swinging late, fouling the ball off to the right side. Two two pitch grounded to Morgan easy play for Joe and there's one away. Up comes Alou yesterday 0 for 3. Spent most of the season with the Cardinals. Came to the A's in late August. Hit 281 one home run. National League batting champ a couple of years ago with Pittsburgh. First pitch misses, ball one. Won the batting championship in 66. That was his first year with the Pirates. Came up with the Giants. One and oh the count. One and one. With the left hander going, the A's have changed the top of their order. Rudy's been dropped to number three, hit second yesterday, and Alou goes into that spot. One out, bases empty in the first inning. No score. Alou chops it past Grimsley, but Menke there to get it and throw him out. Two down. Riverfront Stadium, an all AstroTurf surface. Philadelphia and San Francisco now are the same types of service. You know, it's funny. When the park first opened, they thought it would be a hitter's park. But I think most everybody you talk to now, they consider it a pitcher's park. 
the Reds had a much better average on the road this year than at home. Joe Rudy the batter led the American League in hits this year. There's a base hit into left field the first hit of the game so Rudy is on a two out single to left as Rose gets it back in and Mike Epstein will be the batter. Rudy that breaks the streak he was 0 for 13 in the last three games the last two playoff games game one yesterday when he was 0 for 4. So the A's were the first runner Epstein the batter. When Epstein steps in we're going to get a shot of the second baseman Morgan and watch how deep he plays for Epstein on this carpet here. He's almost back in short right field. Epstein was really moaning about that. They used to have a line back there designating where the end of a skin part of the infield would be but they took it out this year. Ball one to Epstein. Mike yesterday 0 for 3. Hit 270 during the year with 26 homers. Two out in the first inning no score. Rudy at first base. In for a strike and it's one and one. Sal Bando will be next. The Reds playing Epstein to pull Menke well off the line at third base. Epstein chops it foul and the count one and two. Game three coming up on Tuesday night three night games at the Oakland Coliseum. Tuesday and Wednesday the fifth game if necessary on Thursday. Game six and seven if necessary back here at Riverfront Stadium next weekend. Grimsley 22 years old. One two pitch up high ball two two and two. Ross started the season with Indianapolis and the American Association. Blasted Sparky Anderson when he was sent down had a good spring. But the Reds had a lot of off days at the beginning of the year. And so Anderson wanted Grimsley to get his work in and didn't feel he could get it in up here. Then he was called up in May and won 14 games. 2-2 to Epstein. Popped in the air. Might be playable. Foul ground. Menke with a chance. And Canna come up with it. So Epstein stays alive. And we'll look at it again. The ball had it been hit a little bit higher Menke could have taken his eye off it one more time to see how close he was to the stands. But it was just a little bit of a bloop foul pop. Couldn't get over there in time. Two balls, two strikes on Epstein. Just missing ball three. Full count, two down. Joe Rudy will be going from first base. Rudy off to an unmolested lead. Perez, knowing he's going, can play back three or four steps. And the 3 2 pitch got him swinging. Epstein strikes out. A's gone in the first, no runs a hit, one left, end of a half inning, no score. No score, bottom of the first. The Reds line up, Pete Rose will lead off in left, then we'll see Joe Morgan at second, Bobby Tolan hitting third in center, the cleanup man, Johnny Bench, the catcher, Tony Perez at first base, Dennis Menke at third, hitting sixth, the right fielder, Cesar Geronimo, Darrell Cheney at shortstop, and Ross Grimsley. Pete Rose, 0 for 4 yesterday, takes inside ball one. We're looking at one of the American League's premier pitchers today. Very underrated nationally, a 20-game winner the last two years. He really battles you, catfish hunter. Rose, it's a high pop-up to shallow left field. Campanaris going out. There's Rudy, and it's the left fielder Rudy for the catch. One away. Hunter doesn't look overpowering from the stands or from your TV uh, position. But he moves the ball up and down, in and out, different speeds around the plate. And when he gets two strikes on you, he doesn't mess around either. There's his record this year, and it's an excellent record. He pitched two games against the Tigers in the playoff, allowed only one run in each game, was not involved in a win or a loss. 21-7, and seven, best winning percentage in the American League. Morgan, the batter, takes the ball 1-0. and oh. 
Morgan hit 292. 16 home runs, 73 runs batted in. A high number for somebody who hit in the second spot all season. One and one account. No score, bottom of the first. Base is empty. One out. Sal Bando in shallow. Morgan a good bunter. One and two. Bando watched the playoffs on TV, watched the Pittsburgh third baseman Hebner playing in and decided to do the same thing himself. So he's playing tighter against Rose, Morgan, and Tolan than he usually does against those type of hitters. Down goes Morgan as Hunter gets his first strikeout. Two down in the first inning. Bobby Tolan coming up. Bobby Tolan, one for four yesterday, out all of 1971, tore his Achilles tendon in a basketball game in January of 71. Went to spring training with the Reds, was with them in the regular season but never activated, then retoured in Los Angeles in May. Unique style, holds the bat weight up, takes the ball one and oh. A lot of people think he has a hitch in his swing, but with his average, I guess you call it style, don't you? <laughs> One and one the count. Tolan got off to a great start this year, hitting over 400 through April. Watch Look him at again. the last pitch. He does have a hitch, actually, Al, but he gets over it before the pitch is on the way. Tolan missing a bunt attempt. One and two. Bobby's in his fourth World Series. Came over from the Cardinals. Played with the Cards in the 67 and 68 Series with the Reds in 1970. Count holding it one and two. On deck is Johnny Bench. Well, you notice when Hunter's ahead, he doesn't tease you with bad pitches. He comes right back in, tries to make you hit his pitch in the strike zone. Doesn't waste many pitches. One, two to Tolan. And down he goes. On a check swing, Tolan strikes out. Honachek checking with the third base umpire. Engelou said he comes around. And Tolan strikes out, so Hunter gets two strikeouts, sets the Reds down one, two, three in the first, and at the end of one, A's nothing, Reds nothing. There are the A's coaches, Irv Norin, the third base coach, second year as a coach in the majors with Open. At first base, Jerry Adair, former American League infielder. Adair in his first year as a coach. No score, second inning, game two of the 1972 World Series. Oakland winning yesterday 3 to 2. And the 5, 6, and 7 hitters. This is Sal Bando with Hendrick and Tennis to follow. Ross Grimsley working for the Reds. Foul back 0 and 1. Sal Bando, great college player at Arizona State. Reggie Jackson went there. Rick Monday used to be with the A's, was there. Signed after his junior year. Oh and two. He hasn't been hitting in the playoffs either. They were glad to see Rudy, I imagine, get that hit in the first inning, and they're hoping now Bando comes alive with a bat. Bando born in Ohio in Cleveland, living in Oakland. Strike two pitch. One and two the count. Bando signing after his junior year in college. Had he stayed his senior year at Arizona State, Bobby Winkles was going to make him a catcher. But then he signed with the then Kansas City A's. Winkles, of course, is now the new manager of the California Angels. Bando drives it to center, and it's in for a base hit. Bobby Tolan gets it back in, and so the A's have their second hit. Sal Bando at first base with nobody out. George Hendrick, the batter. Boy, they talk in glowing terms about his future. Well, they wonder, you know... Uh... You look at his average there, 182, but he's been up and down the minors to the A's and back again. He's never had a chance to really settle down and play somewhere for a period of time. But there isn't a club in baseball, I think, that wouldn't take him. He has all the physical tools. It's a grounder off the glove of Grimsley to Morgan. To Cheney, one and not in time. Grimsley able to slow it down and perhaps costing the Reds the double play. Had the ball gone straight through to Morgan, the Reds might have gotten two. So they get a force. 
and we'll watch it again. Hendricks has fine speed. The ball deflected by Grimsley, making Morgan have to go back. Bando really went in hard to second base. Here goes Bando. He's built like a fullback. Going out of the way to get him, which really is illegal. But you see it all the time around second. Here's Tennis, so it's a fly ball to shallow left. Cheney out. Rose with Tolan coming on. It's Rose for the catch. Two down. Hendrick on the force play at first. Scored 1-4-6. Grimsley to Morgan to Cheney. Tennis gone for the second out. Here's Dick Green. Spent much of the season on the disabled list. Back operation. Hit 286 with three runs batted in. 0 for 2 yesterday. Hendrick at first. Two down. A foul tip 0-1. You know, Al, late in the year, the A's would pinch hit in this situation. They'd pinch hit the first time this second baseman starting the game would come up. They'd put a man in the field, and Williams would bring another pinch hitter up for the next time the second baseman would come up. He'd have four pinch hitters using four different second basemen. But he didn't do it against Detroit, and yesterday he only made a late replacement for uh, second baseman Green. Strike one pitch is a base hit through the middle. Hendrick will take a short turn at second and hold on as Tolan gets it back in. So the A's with three hits, runners at first and second, and Catfish Hunter coming up. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. Catfish Hunter, one of the best hitting pitchers in the majors. He's hit safely in 10 of his last 12 games at 219 this year. Foul tip into Bench's glove, 0 and 1. Al, he received $50,000 to play for the A's this year, $45,000 to pitch, and $5,000 paid by his owner, Finley, as a hitter. He has 11 hits in his last 31 times up. That's 355. Base hit into left field. Hendrick around third. The throw by Rose, and he's safe at home. Bench able to pick it up to hold Green at second, and the A's take a one to nothing lead. So Catfish Hunter, 11 out of 13 now. You can he see. made a good throw. Hendrick made a very sharp turn at third base, which made the play for the A's and for himself. You can see why they like Hendrick, because he can run, he can throw, he can do a lot of things. And his speed, a slower man, might have been out at home plate. But Hendrick scores some second on the... Ball sharply hit the Rose in left field, who had a good throw to the plate. Three hits in the inning. Oakland on top, one to nothing. Green now at second. Dick off to his lead, Catfish Hunter. At first, wearing a warm-up jacket on a very chilly afternoon. Temperature in the low 50s. Campanaris the batter. Ball one to him. Campanaris grounded out in the first inning. Grimsley in an inning and two-thirds has already given up twice as many hits as he did in his last game, a two-hitter against the Pirates in the playoff game. Ball two, two and other count. The Reds will get some activity in the bullpen. Pedro Bourbon is going down to the pen to begin to heat up for the Reds. Two on with two out. Line drive, base hit to left field. Green around third and coming in, the throw, and they nail him. Pete Rose to Johnny Bench to cut down the run at home. Single for Campanaris, and Green cut down seven to two. We'll watch it again. The difference on the play was that Green made the wide turn. Pete making an excellent throw. Look at Bench go after Green, really trying to block him out. Here it is again, Bench. Up the line, about six feet in front of the plate, has him completely blocked out and makes the tag. But four hits that inning for the eighth. One run, four hits, two left, end of an inning and a half. Oakland one, Cincinnati nothing. Let's look again. Here you see Green. Watch how wide he goes. 
Hendrick cut the base much more sharply. Now he goes way out, giving himself a bad angle coming into home plate. He wasted quite a few steps. You don't have to be fast to run base as well, but you've got to cut the bases if you're going to score. one nothing A's. Johnny Bench leading off again, bottom of the second. He led off four times yesterday, fifth time in a row in the series. A strike going on. That's what Sparky Anderson was telling you before the game, Tony. The first three men have to get on. They didn't. And again, Bench leads off. Another strike. Let's talk about Green for a minute. Remember, he's running after spinal surgery. He had a spinal operation in the spring, and he said he's about 85% of what he used to be, bending and running. Ground ball up the middle. Campanaris, tough play. Not in time. First hit for the Reds, and Johnny Bench beats on a roller through the middle. With Bench at bat, you've got almost seven outfielders playing very deep, and Campanaris playing the pole has to range far to his left. Johnny got a good jump out of the batter's box. Perez will be the batter as Bench gets his third hit in two games, fourth time he's been on base. Perez had two hits yesterday. Tony hit 283 this year. 21 home runs, 90 runs batted in. Foul back. 0 and 1. Six year in a row, Perez with 90 or more runs batted in. Missed the better part of May, a bad hand. Inside, 1 and 1. 1 to nothing, Oakland. The A's are run on four hits in the second inning. Bench at first base, nobody out, bottom of the second. The 1 1 pitch. Popped in the air and foul ground, left side, will be back in the seats. 1 and 2. Bench held on by Epstein. One and two on Perez. Jim Hunter, 21 game winner, hasn't lost since the 25th of August. End of the regular season with a five game winning streak. Inside of Perez, and the count is even. Two and two. Got that nickname Catfish when he was five years old. Ran away from home one day, and they found him with a string of catfish. He was fishing, and that nickname has stuck ever since. Born, still lives in Hertford, North Carolina. 26 years old. Full count to Perez. Three and two. Perez looking down at Gramis. Uh, Alex really flashing a sign for Johnny Bench at first base. To see if Bench will be going. Normally the Reds do not start Bench in this situation, but we'll see. I'd say about 20% of the time he'll get started. Three and two with less than two down. This time he goes, and it's ball four. So Bench now at second. Perez at first. Mankey the batter. Dick Williams and the A's dug out. Dennis Mankey, 0 for 3 yesterday. The 233. Nine home runs, 50 runs batted in. At 20 runs batted in in one month, August. Hunter usually has good control. He averaged two walks every nine innings he pitched this past season. Bench at second. Perez at first as Mickey waits. Bunted foul off to the right. Strike one. There's Perez going back to first. Johnny Bench at second. Bench been on four times in five appearances in this series. 0. Oakland on top. One to nothing. Sal Bando into check with Hunter. To see how they play it as far as the bun is concerned. Al Hunter probably uses the outside two inches of each side of the plate better than anybody else in the American League anyway. He was trying to see what Mickey was going to do on that first pitch. He threw high and inside to see if he's going to bunt. I wouldn't doubt that they'll switch now and let him hit away.
And to an Epstein in shallow. Pickoff play is on, and they throw the ball into center field. Banks will go to third, Perez to second. The A's at Campanaris breaking the cover third. Green breaking the cover second on the pickoff play. And the break goes to the Reds. It was a decoy play by Campanaris. He thought that if Bench saw him leaving very soon for third base, that Bench would take a bigger lead and Green could sneak in behind him. But Green was a little late coming over to cover the bag, and the ball got by him. Hunter gets a throwing error. The Reds now have Bench at third. Perez at second. 0-1 oh the count on Minky. Popped in the air and foul ground right side. Epstein is giving chase. Won't have a play. 0-2. Oh On deck is Cesar Geronimo. Bench down the line from third, infield back, except Epstein. The A's will give up the run on the ground ball. Up high, ball one. <laughs> Hunter checking with tennis. One two pitch is outside and the count is even. Two and two on Mickey. Got him swinging for the first out. That's three strikeouts for Catfish Hunter. So one down now and Williams is going to come out and make his first appearance at the mound. Sparky Anderson with Joe Morgan in the Reds dugout. Good and up. Williams with Bando and Hunter and Tennis confer at the mound and that's the maximum. You can have only four people at the mound during a conference in the World Series. Which is the American League rule. Of course in the National League you know, all your infield can go out there during the regular season. Williams is right out there now asking his pitcher Hunter whether he'd like to put Geronimo on and pitch the Cheney with the bases loaded set up a force possibility at any base. Both Geronimo and Cheney left handed hitters. Williams coming back. His first year as a manager in the minors at Toronto 1965. It's interesting he succeeded Sparky Anderson. Anderson's first year as a manager 64 same club Toronto International League. You'll see Williams a lot in this World Series. He comes to the mound, always talking it over with his pitcher, catcher, infielders. By contrast, almost any time Anderson comes to the mound, it's to make a pitching change. They'll pitch to Geronimo, a 275 hitter during the year. Swung on and missed 0 1. Geronimo off to a very slow start this year at the plate, benched for a while. Great arm, though, and so Anderson put him back in the outfield in July. And played in the entire last month of the season. Oh, and to the count. Geronimo with 295 after the All Star game. Born in the Dominican Republic. Didn't play baseball until he was 18 years old. Pop foul out of play. Geronimo was originally signed by the Yankees, they signed him as a pitcher. Then they converted him to an outfielder. Oakland drafted him after his first professional year, or rather uh, Houston drafted him, and then he spent a couple of seasons with the Astros, mainly as a pinch runner, pinch runner, late inning defensive replacement. Fouled back again, 0 and 2 the count. Bench at third. Perez at second. One out, bottom of the second inning. One to nothing, Oakland. A's infield back, except Bando at third. Strike two pitch, missing. One and two on Geronimo. Hunter trying to get out of a second inning jam. Sparky Anderson 
with Joe Morgan. And Geronimo fouls it off again. Alley, A's in the outfield, Rudy, the left fielder, and Hendrick, the center fielder, are playing Geronimo as a left field hitter. There's a wide open space between Hendrick and the right fielder, Alou. Alou is playing him as a pole hitter, so big space in right center. Geronimo, four home runs during the regular season, hit a big one in the playoffs, game five. Pulled the Reds to within one. 0 for 3 yesterday. Up high in the count is even. Two and two. Two two pitch. Grounded foul outside first. Bench going back to third. Perez at second. Bench led off with an infield head. Perez walked. Hunter then threw the ball into center field trying to pick Bench off. Menke struck out for the first out. And the count two and two on Geronimo. Fouled back again. So Hunter working to get Geronimo. Throwing a little bit harder to both Menke and now Geronimo. He wants the strikeout. Ordinarily, he's the type of pitcher that tries to get you to hit the ball somewhere. Doesn't like to throw a lot of pitches. Swung on and missed, and Geronimo becomes strikeout victim number four. So Hunter struck out Morgan and Tolan in the first, Menke and Geronimo in the second. Two down, runner still at second and third, and Cheney the batter. And he really had Geronimo chasing a bad pitch. Here's Dick Williams coming out again. Cheney's the left-handed hitter. Williams already getting booed by the Cincinnati fans for his frequent appearances to the mound. And again here they're talking about walking Cheney with first base open. Should you walk Cheney to get to Grimsley? And also the other, we talked about the fact that the American League rule for men at the mound maximum National League any number the other thing now in the World Series you can make as many appearances as you want at the mound in the regular season if you go out a second time in an inning you have to make a pitching change you might see those empty seats in the background those are seats only used for professional or college football games there they are never used for baseball we have a complete sellout again today yesterday the largest crowd in the history of Cincinnati baseball 52,918 yesterday, about the same today. And they're going to walk Cheney. So they'll take their chances with Grimsley. And we talked about it yesterday. As far as the Reds are concerned, the worst thing that could happen, Grimsley goes out and you start the next inning with the top of the order. The Reds like to start an inning with Pete Rose. So Cheney, a 250 hitter will be walked to get to Grimsley. They used to laugh about Grimsley as a hitter. A lot of jokes in the clubhouse. And then the other day, of course, in his finest hour, not only did he pitch a two-hitter, he picked up two hits, a single and a double. Grimsley's double against Pittsburgh on Tuesday. It was his first extra base hit in the National League. Hit 125 this year. Outfield is shallow. Ball one to him. Base is loaded. Bench at third. Perez at second. Cheney at first. Two down, second inning. One nothing A's. Popped in the air, foul off to the left. Bando giving chase with Campaneras out of play. One and one. I'll tell you one thing, Al. If Hunter gets out of this, it's some kind of a pitching job. And they had runners on second and third, nobody out. But he still has to do something here with Grimsley. Struck out Menke, struck out Geronimo, then the intentional walk to Cheney. One and one the count. The strike, let her high. One and two.
And down he goes as Hunter strikes out the side. So the Reds threaten, nothing doing, no runs, a hit, one error, three left, end of two, one nothing Oakland. Third inning, game two, 1972 World Series, one to nothing Oakland. The A's with a run in the second on four hits. Part of the Oakland contingent. They've got some fans here. Now we're going to give some pro football scores along the way, but here's one note that could really change the well, the setup right now, especially in the American Football Conference, the preliminary report, Bob Greasy, the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, has dislocated his right ankle early in their game against the San Diego Chargers. A dislocated ankle. Alou punches at bow starting the third. 0 and 1. Alou grounded out in the first inning. He'll be followed by Rudy and Epstein. Takes the next pitch up high. One and one. Grimsley not a strikeout pitcher. Averages only three or four a game. In for a strike one and two. A lot of times this year even when he's pitched effectively a lot of balls have been hit to the outfield. You look in the scorebook and you'll see a lot of sevens eights and nines fly balls to the outfield. Oftentimes he's given up four or five balls to the warning track in a game. Punch to Menke at third. And he gets him. One away. Next week, anchorman John Chancellor reports all the world and national events, and David Brinkley's journal provides lively commentary on the NBC Nightly News right here on NBC. Joe Rudy snapped an 0 for 13 streak in the first inning with a single. The A's top hitter during their regular season. Had a good chance at the batting championship until late in the year. Hit 3.05. 1 and 0. Oh. Rudy wound up fifth in the league. Rod Carew, the Twins, the batting champion. One oh over for a strike in the count even. Grimsley born in Topeka. Moved to Memphis Tennessee when he was young went to school there his father pitched briefly in the majors with the Chicago White Sox in 1951. Pop foul out of play one and two. Grimsley's father is here today. He has seen his son pitch five different times and his son is five and oh with his father in the stands. Got to travel his father. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about it. <laughs> Drive to deep left field. Pete Rose just looking up and he's hit it out. Joe Rudy a home run. He had 19 during the regular season and Oakland leads two to nothing. Joe Rudy getting hot now. He is the best all around batter on the eight. The most complete hitter. Can drive the ball to all fields with power. And he pulls this inside pitch and hits this one high and deep. Well back in left field. Joe Rudy hits the third A's home run in the World Series. Epstein grounds it on two hops to Perez at first for the unassisted out two down Bando will be the batter and the Reds again with activity in the bullpen right hander Pedro Borbon who is up in the second inning throwing again Sal Bando singled in the second inning the A's have six hits. Bando one for five in the series fouls it back. Oh, one is grounded to short. Cheney with it. And throws him out to retire the side. In the third inning, the A's get a run on one hit. The home run by Rudy. Nobody left on. At the end of two and a half, Oakland two, Cincinnati nothing.
World Series game. Pete Rose lines it into center field for a base hit. That's the first hit in the World Series for Rose, who had nine during the championship series to set a playoff record. Second hit off Hunter. And the batter, Morgan. Al, it'll be interesting to see after the long inning that Catfish Hunter had the last inning, how it affects his stamina. Ordinarily, he throws 85, 90 pitches a ball game. He threw an awful lot of pitches the last inning. Joe Morgan struck out in the first inning. 0 for 3 yesterday. Still bothered with a sore heel. Pops it in the air in foul ground. Tennis coming back and has a play. One away. So Morgan got they've done a good job on Morgan. Bobby Tolan coming up. The Reds think they can run on Gene Tennis, the A's catcher. Let's see if Rose challenges him now. Rose held on by Epstein. Tolan, the batter, struck out his first trip. One for five in the series. Oh, and one. The Reds with more activity now in the bullpen. For the first time, Wayne Simpson starts to heat up. Rose back as Hunter lobs it over. Wayne Simpson with the Reds in 70, but ineligible to play in the World Series on the disabled list. 0 and 2. Breaking pitch. Hunter so far in the ballgame has been mostly fastball hard slider. That's one of the few change of speed pitches he's thrown. Tolan fouls it off. Owen oh, to the count. The A's are running the second, one in the third. On top, two nothing. Rose at first, one out. Bottom of the third. Tolan pops it up. Campanaris is calling. And there's two down. So Rose still at first base after a leadoff single. And with two down, here comes Bench, who's been the hottest red in the series. At the end of the playoffs, of course, with a dramatic home run. Led the league in runs batted in this year. There is, folks, Katie and Ted Bench. Now living in Cincinnati from Bingar, Oklahoma. Outside, ball one. National League's MVP in 1970. Could win it again this year. Just missing ball two, two and zero. Oh. Almost became a psychological thing with Bench this year. Thought he couldn't hit in this ballpark. Got very hot on the road, and then the Reds would come in off a road trip, and he'd slump at home, get hot again out on the road. But then toward the end of the season, he started hitting consistently well in Riverfront. Outside ball three. Bench this year hit 16 of his home runs. Here hit 24 on the road. Three and one. Bench must feel very peculiar up there. There's a man on base for him. First time in the World Series, Bench hasn't let off in an inning. Put in the air to deep center field, but plenty of room. Hendrick there, and the side retired. So Rose leads off with a single. He stranded at first. No runs, one hit. One left at the end of three full. A's two, Reds nothing. Fourth inning, A's on top, two nothing. George Hendrick hit into a force play in the second inning. 0 for 3 in the two games. Takes a strike. Interesting, he went to Fremont High School in Los Angeles. Hendrick playing center field for the A's and the center fielder for the Reds, Bobby Tolan, went to the same school. Top slowly to Grimsley in time. 
One away. Gene Tennis coming up. The Reds bullpen has been active almost the entire game. And again now, right-hander Wayne Simpson on your left. Pedro Borbon on the right. Borbon up for the third time of the game. Gene Tennis yesterday became the first player in the history of the series to homer his first two times up. Missing ball one. Fly to left in the second inning. Hit 225 this year. One and one. Al, I was interested. I know you must have been too. He says the correct pronunciation is Tanachi. Fury Gene Tanachi is his name, but he has anglicized it now to Gene Tennis. Grounds it to Cheney. And the throw to Perez gets him two down. There's Reggie Jackson. Yesterday he had a crutch, and today he's using a bat in the Oakland dugout. But he has a cast on the back of his leg from the middle of the thigh to the middle of his calf to immobilize the hamstring portion where he pulled the hamstring muscle. He's out of the World Series all the way. Dick Green singled in the second inning. Fly ball to right field. Cesar Geronimo drifting over. And an easy inning. It's the first time Oakland's gone out one, two, three. At the end of three and a half, it remains A's two. Reds nothing. Due to time constraints, we'll take you to the top of the seventh inning. The top of the seventh inning and the A's fans who journeyed here from the West Coast up for their stretch. And your One United Way campaign supports many health and welfare services, helping children, young people, families, the elderly and the sick, and helping our servicemen and women through the USO and the Red Cross. You know, there are times when people need help, and they get it from the agency supported by your United Way campaign. For thanks to you, it's working. When the drive opens in your town, give your fair share the United Way. Seventh inning, Kurt Gowdy, Al Michaels, Tony Kubek with you for NBC. Henrik chasing the curveball. He's hit into a force play. He's tapped out to the pitcher. One strike. Play him to the opposite field. One ball, one strike. Reggie Jackson uh, looking up at the <laughs> scoreboard of the largest attendance crowd just posted. Foul back. They really do an excellent job here in Cincinnati on their electronic scoreboard. Right to the second with everything. And as we sat here, Tony and I, in the rain the other day, waiting for the Pittsburgh Cincinnati playoff game, the fifth game to start, they were only a couple of three, five, ten seconds behind what was happening in Detroit. There's a fly ball to right field. Geronimo. The one handed grab, one down. Played that one rather casually. Gene Tennis, fly to left, grounded to short. The one thing we haven't yet seen in this series, Kurt, Geronimo's arm. Sparky Anderson contends best arm in baseball. A strike. You know, the Pittsburgh fans would argue that with Clemente. Yeah, you had a couple pretty fair arms there in those five games. One ball, one strike. The Gene Tennis. Cesar Geronimo. No wonder he was signed to the pitcher. The 1 1 delivery. Foul back. 1 and 2. The A scored in the second. Jim Hunter single in George Hendrick from second base. And Rudy hit a homer in the third. And that's been it. Two runs. He went after a bad pitch. Borbon strikes him out. Third strikeout for Borbon in an inning and two thirds. So since Rudy hit the home run in the third with one out, the A's have failed to come up with a base hit. They've had only one base runner. That was Epstein who walked. That's a strike to Dick Green.
Nothing in two. Or Bone looks sharp. Showing good breaking stuff on the outside part of the plate. Got tennis. Threw one to Green the first pitch. When Green was looking outside, he came inside with a fastball. What an inning for Borbone. Four strikeouts for him and two innings of relief. Three up, three down for the A's. The last of the seventh inning in Cincinnati. Oakland two, Cincinnati nothing. In the last of the seventh inning, Oakland ahead two nothing. Daryl Cheney is going to start it off for Cincinnati. Joe Haig is on deck to bat for Borbone. To strike the Cheney. He's walked intentionally and flied out. Played straight away, Bando in close, and there's the pinch hitter Hague. Curve a little bit high. One ball, one strike. Jim Hunter. Has that only one inning in which a Cincinnati man did not reach base? Foul out of play. So he's had some pressure pitching today. He's had to work hard. But as his pattern, he's tough when it counts. He's a real battler. There's a pop up, fly ball in the shallow left, coming on for it is Joe Rudy. One down in the last of the seven. A very quiet crowd right now in Cincinnati. Joe Haig batting for Borbone and Tom Hall, the swift left hander, will come on to pitch in the eighth inning. Kurt, if you're a hitter going up to the plate against Catfish Hunter, you can't wait to get up there the next time. He does not overpower you too often. But you always go back to the bench and say, boy, I had a good swing. I just missed that one. But you do that the entire game. You just miss it. He changes speeds well. He hits you on the fist on the end of the bat. He's some kind of pitcher. He doesn't. I, I still claimed all year he doesn't get the national acclaim he should. Ball one. He only averages about six strikeouts a game. He's not an overpowering pitcher, but he's a true professional. Foul back to Joe Haig, who hit 243 for the Reds this year, seven homers, 31 RBIs. Secured early in the year from the Cardinals for Bernie Carbo. 1 1 pitch. That's in there. One ball, two strikes. Hunter had an earned run average of 2.04, which was third best in the American League this season. Just outside. Two and two. Pete Rose is the next scheduled batter at the top of the Cincinnati batting order. Two two pitch. That's flied out in the right field. Had him off stride on a breaking pitch. Addy Alou puts it away. Two down. Rose is flied to left, single to center, flied to right. Cincinnati has not scored in its last 11 and two thirds innings. They say keep the first three off base. That's what they've done today. They did it yesterday. One hit between Rose, Morgan, and Tolan today. No runs for the Reds. There's a strike. You know, this series could result in a few road victories. Both Oakland and Cincinnati led their leagues in victories on the road. Strike two. Maybe the home park won't make much difference. One two count to Pete Rose. Two out, nobody on. Oakland ahead, two nothing. Last of the seventh. Foul away. Kurt, I've been a little bit surprised that Rose Morgan or Tolan have not tried to bunt a little bit more. Try to get on base. They've been swinging away pretty constantly. Maybe it's like you say, Tony. They just they take a look at Hunter and think they can hit him. A one-two pitch. Two and two to Pete Rose. 
Rose is a confident player and I was talking to him before the game. What do you think? He said, well, they've got one win. He said, that makes the series all even now. Struck him out in a fastball. And Jim Hunter puts him down. One, two, three. We've gone seven innings to score. Oakland two, Cincinnati nothing. Baseball's honored guest today, Jackie Robinson, his wife, his son and daughter behind him, and the commissioner, Bowie Kuhn, on your right. Jim Hunter will start it off in the eighth inning. He's single in a run in the second. He's grounded out. He'll be followed by Campanaris and Matty Lou. Tom Hall now pitching a strike. Tom Hall won 10 and lost one this year. Look at that record. Earn run average of 2.61. He struck out 134 batters in 124 innings. Fouled away. In the playoffs in two games against the hard hitting Pirates, he allowed just one run in seven in the third innings, struck out eight. Every time that pitcher strikes out more men than innings pitched, he's got some real stuff. And this 25 year old left hander has it. One ball, two strikes. They call him the blade. Look how thin he is. Weighs only 155 pounds, six feet tall. He has a cutting arm. Popped up. Perez, the first baseman, waiting. One down in the eighth inning. Hayes did their scoring early, getting a run in the second. Joe Rudy hit a homer in the third. There's been no score since. Campanaris coming up, grounded out, single to left, fly it out. Menke in tight at third. Straight away otherwise with the Reds in the infield and outfield. Ball one. Campanero says if he gets on base, he's still going to try and run on Johnny Bench. The 1 0 pitch. We have two more innings to go. That's two and nothing. In the Pittsburgh Cincinnati playoffs here, the crowd really involved in every pitch, on their feet, roaring. I've never seen anything like it. Right now, I'd have to say they're underwhelmed. Very quiet here. They're disappointed so far. A strike. Their team was heavily favored. They've been beaten the first game and they're trailing 2 0 now. The Reds have their heavy guns coming up in the eighth and ninth inning. The 2 1 pitch. That's into the seats. Two balls, two strikes. Tom Hall not only has a good fastball, he has surprisingly good breaking stuff. In fact, some people thought that with the shaky two starts that Don Gullett had in the playoffs against Pittsburgh, Hall might become a starting pitcher in this series. But Sparky says, nope, he needs the left-hander in the bullpen. 2-2 two -two pitch to Campanaris. Grills it out in the right center. Bobby Tolan for it. Hauls it in. They're two down. The Reds have had superb relief pitching from Bourbon, from Hall. But even before that, Grimsley had settled down, had retired the last eight batters he faced. Matty Lou is the only Oakland starter with previous World Series experience. Played with the Giants in the 62 World Series. The strike. 12 Cincinnati players have had series experience. 11 with the Reds and Javier with the Cardinals. One ball, one strike. That should be an advantage for Cincinnati. Soft curve missing outside. Two balls and a strike. Now that shadow has creeped just about over home plate and the sun could start to be a problem in left field. 
Two, one pitch. Three and one to Matty Lou. Three and two. This game has not been loaded with any action. It's very few chances for difficult plays by anyone. The highlight has been the way Hunter has kept working out of jams. The 3 2 pitch. That one's hit down the right field line, and it is foul. Matty Alou is one of the most relaxed hitters in baseball. After he fouled that one off, he looked like he waved to somebody in the opposing dugout or somebody in the stands with this big smile on his face. Foul oh, ball. The A's players kid around about him. They, they don't even know what town he's playing in half the time. He just comes in, takes his four whacks, gets a couple of hits, and leaves town. The pressure of a World Series on Matty Alou. <laughs> Two away for Oakland, eighth inning. Nobody on. They're leading 2 nothing. He lines it to right field. That's the first hit for the A's since the third inning. They're seventh in the game. And the batter now, Joe Rudy, who single, hit a home run to left in the third, struck out. John Chancellor's clear and incisive reporting and a lively commentary of David Brinkley's journal. Make the NBC Nightly News television's best right here on NBC. Again, they're playing Rudy to right center and right field. Tolan and Geronimo. Pete Rose straight away and left. Foul back. For you Red fans in the last of the eighth inning, Morgan, Tolan, and Bench are scheduled up. Matty Lou at first, two down. Curved him. Strike two. Many of the American League teams try to pitch change of speed pitches to Rudy and breaking balls down low and in. They like to have him try and pull the ball on the ground. Cincinnati uh, earlier in the ballgame and yesterday trying to pitch him inside with fastballs. Of course, he hurt him in that situation early in this ballgame with a home run. One ball, two strikes. Mike Keegan on deck. Two away, Lou at first. Another foul. One ball, two strikes to Rudy. There goes a little big jump. The throw, and he's in there. He stole on the pitcher, not on Johnny Bank. Tremendous jump. Alou had made his initial move even before Hall made his motion to the plate. Bench really hurried his throw, but no chance. Base was stolen on Hall. Bench could have made the most perfect throw in history and never gotten him. And uh, I'm surprised that Hall didn't go to first base. He had a chance to pick him off. That's the A's first stolen base in four attempts. Alou now with his back to you at second base, two down. And a 2 2 count to Joe Rudy. Ball three to Rudy. He 
didn't give him anything too good with Hegan coming up behind Rudy. Hegan, a left-handed batter. Runners on first and second, two outs in the eighth inning. The Oakland A's leading 2-0. This will be Hegan's first time up. Cincinnati infield should have one thing in mind at this point with two down. Force out at any base. Play deep. Try and knock the ball down. Strike to him. What to save this run. Morgan at second playing very deep. Egan was used as a defensive specialist by the A's in the late innings of first base. He had 329 this year. Strike two. Runners on first and second, two outs for Oakland. That's the Lou, the lead runner. Rudy at first. Struck him out on three pitches. No runs for Oakland. One hit, no errors, two left. Last of the eighth inning coming up. Oakland two, Cincinnati nothing. The Oakland A's fans, their team leading two to nothing. Last of the eighth inning. Kurt Gowdy with Al Michaels and Tony Kubek. Now Joe Rudy is playing the sun field. The sun hanging right on the rim of the stadium. Fly balls you'll have to look up in at. A curve to Joe Morgan for strike one who bluffed the bunt. Morgan has struck out, fouled out, reached in an error. Bando really playing him tight at third. The Reds scoreless in their last 12 innings in the World Series. He hits a fly out in the left field. Rudy with those sunglasses down, looking up. Has it. Boy, he flipped those glasses down right away when the ball left the bat. Heard high fly balls are not bothersome at this point in left field. Rennie Stennett had those semi-line drives, those little looping balls that are really a problem out there at this time. Bobby Tolan hitless today. Strike. He had one hit yesterday. Let's see now. Uh, yesterday and today, those top three men have had only two hits in two games. That's the secret of beating the Reds. Keep those top three who can really run off the bases. Strike two. Jim Hunter has set down seven in a row. He seems to be getting stronger now. Still has a lot left on his fastball. He threw the ball right by Tolan. Foul ball. Two strikes to Bobby Tolan. Raleigh fingers and Vita Blue are loosening up in the A's bullpen. Just missed. One ball, two strikes. Fly ball to right field. There's a Lou. Two down. Once again, just missing. Good swing by Tolan, but on the fist. He may have shattered his bat. Johnny Bench. Single, fly out, walk. He and Perez have been the only Reds reaching base in these two games. America's most famous sports artist, Leroy Neiman, is here doing portrait studies of Bench. Right. And it came up on our TV booth today to do some sketches of NBC's television position. The one strike delivery. It's a foul back out of play, and Hunter quickly has him two strikes. The A's on top, two to nothing, last of the eighth inning. Jim Hunter. In the opening game of the playoffs against the Tigers gave up only one run. The second time he pitched only one run. Yet he didn't get a victory in either game. One ball, two strikes. His club doesn't score many runs for him. There's always a pitcher on the staff that works out that way.
There's a drive hit in the deep right center. Alou will have room, though. Grabs it on a warning track. Hunter kept bench from pulling the ball. Three up, three down. We're going to the ninth inning. Oakland two, Cincinnati nothing. We're going to the ninth inning. Sal Bando, George Hendrick, and Gene Tennis for the A's, facing Tom Hall, working his second inning of relief. Grimsley started with the first five for Bone two innings, and now Hall. Ball one, and in the last of the ninth, the Reds have Perez, Menke, and Geronimo scheduled up. Two and zero to Bando, who singled in the second, grounded out in the third, struck out in the sixth. Ground ball to shortstop Cheney. One down. Due to time constraints, we'll jump ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning. Hertford, North Carolina, pitched five no hitters in high school. Breaking pitch. When he was a, just about to be signed by a professional baseball team who were scouting him, he lost two toes on his left foot in a hunting accident. A ball. Some of the major clubs drew back. But Charles Finley had made him a bonus offer, stuck with it, flew him to the Mayo Clinic, where they operated on his foot. And it was quite a decision by Charlie Finley. Foul away, two and two. Raleigh Fingers, Dick Williams has Raleigh Fingers and Vita Blue in his bullpen. The Red fans coming alive, trying to get a rally going here. The 2 2 pitch. There's a line shot over the head of Campanaris. Looked like Campanaris might catch that ball. It got to his left. Perez is on base for the third time. It did. We'll watch him again. It looked like he timed his jump perfectly. He had time. And just off to his left and out into left center field. So a base hit for Perez, who has two today and four in the series. That's the first Cincinnati hit since Hugh Landers pinch hit double in the fifth. Sparky Anderson roaming that Cincinnati dugout. He has Dennis Menke up now. Menke's hitless in three times. There's a long drive to deep left. That ball going, going. And it is caught by Rudy. Joe Rudy rubs it with extra bases against the wall, and they nearly double up Perez at first. What a grab by Joe Rudy. That's the play of the series as Rudy goes back. Not only does he have a tough play, he's got to fight the sun. He goes up and makes the catch up against the fence and nearly starts a double play. Looked like he almost pressed the ball against the wall, but he had it in the webbing of his glove. Got it back in, and Perez had a dart back to first base to avoid the double play. And Dick Williams moves to the mound after Perez has spanked the single, and Menke hit that line smash. And Rudy made the fantastic climb up the wall on. Now Williams, of course, has Hunter lost it. That's what he's thinking about. He didn't like the way Perez and Menke hit that ball. Watch this now. Rudy turned immediately in that menacing sun field out there and with a great athletic jump up against the wall. The ball jarred loose momentarily right in the tip of the webbing of his glove as he came down with it. I'll bet Al, he'll say after the game, maybe that's the greatest catch I ever made in my life. Cesar Geronimo, a left-hander, is up now. He has struck out, grounded out, flied out. Perez is still on first. That's the third base umpire, Bob Engel. Hunter stays in. Foul out of play. Blue pitched yesterday, two and two-thirds. Pitched four innings Thursday. Pitched also to a man on Wednesday. Pete Rose, anxious. Very anxious. One strike. 
And a great stop by Hegan. Out at first, Hegan has robbed Geronimo of extra bases. Into the right field corner. And it looked at first as if he caught a line drive, but down it went. Fair ball, he dropped it out of his glove, and he held on. He could have had an easy, unassisted double play to end the game as it was a spectacular play, just to knock it down, pick it up, get the out at first base. Mike Hegan had that ball, but his impact when he hit the ground jarred it loose, or this ball game would have been over. Menke and Geronimo had both been robbed of extra bases on sensational plays by the A's, Rudy and Hegan. And Hal McCray now is going to bat for Cheney. Sal Bando before the game said, you know, I'm sure the Reds have underrated us. They look at us with disdain. But he says, we have a great pitching staff, and we have played good defensive baseball all year long. We can win close games. Maybe we're not a great hitting ball club, but he said, we can make plays when it counts. And how right he was here in this ninth inning. Al McCray had four pinch hit homers this past year and had a pinch hit single yesterday. And he hits a ground ball that's going to go through. Here's Perez coming in to score. And it is now two to one. As the Reds have the tying run on base. And Julio Javier is going to bat for Tom Hall. That's the first Reds run in this series on a base hit. Well, Hunter, they're going to have a runner. Concepcion is running at first base for McCray. Well, McCray can really come out of that dugout and swing the bat for you. If we go to extra innings, Concepcion would play shortstop. Sparky Anderson out of left-handed pinch hitters at this point. Dick Williams checking the card in the A's dugout. Ulander and Haig have already been expended. He's used McRae, so he has to come in with a right hand batting Javier. The Reds fans on their feet now. Every man has hit the ball hard off Hunter here in the last of the night. Perez single. Minky clubbed at the deep left. Rudy off the wall with a staff. Geronimo hit a wicked line drive that he can stab. Dick Williams on again. And now McCray is single. Raleigh Fingers is in the bullpen, a right-hander. He pitched yesterday, so did Blue. And he wants Fingers to come in and pitch to this right-handed pinch hitter. We're going to have a break in the action right now at Cincinnati to score in the last of the ninth inning. Oakland 2 and Cincinnati 1. Jim Hunter received it as an ovation as he went into the dugout. He pitched a gutty ball game today. But he lost it here in the last of the ninth inning as he was hammered hard. But he still got two down. And now Raleigh Fingers will pitch to Julio Javier. The Reds have no more left-handed pinch hitters in their dugout. Raleigh Fingers pitched in three games in the playoffs against the Tigers. Gave up four hits and five in the third innings. Only one run. He won one game. Yesterday pitched an inning in two thirds. No run. He's trying to nail down this final out. That's always the hardest one to get. Javier. The tying run at first. Is Concepcion. As a pinch runner for Hal McRae. Oakland two. Cincinnati one. Red fans alive for the first time in the game. Foul back, strike one. Ryder Blue continues to loosen up. Doesn't matter, Ryder left for the next man, Pete Rose. He's a switch hitter. There's Blue. That's Don Gullett alongside of Sparky Anderson. One strike. Go to first to get Concepcion back. What a play that Hegan made, Al. The back-to-back -back plays by Rudy and Hegan. That's the difference in the game right now. That ball was hit so hard that it was just a blur going to first base. That was a cinch double, at least, into the right field corner. One strike. 
Strike two to Javier. Two down. Tying run at first. Last of the night. Two to one Oakland. One ball, two strikes. You've all seen pictures of the old Cincinnati Red Stockings, baseball's first professional team, with their handlebar bar mustaches. Raleigh Fingers looked like he belonged in that era. One ball, two strikes. Runner going. They pop. Mike Egan waiting, waiting. And Oakland has done it again. They have beaten Cincinnati twice in a row in Cincinnati's ballpark. And that's Cincinnati's seventh consecutive series loss at home. Their last home victory in World Series was in 1940 against the Tigers. So Finger saves it for Jim Hunter. And the excellent pitching of the A's prevails again. Backed up by two sensational plays in the ninth by Joe Rudy in left and Mike Hegan at first. And uh, no team has ever in World Series history won the first two games on the road and lost the World Series. Joe Rudy's with me to my far left and Catfish Hunter, the winning pitcher. First of all, Catfish, let me ask you this. What did you think when that ball went out to your boy in left field? I thought the game was tied up, but when he ran back like that, I knew he had a chance. And when he jumped up there, I thought he missed the ball. But it come out in the web of his glove, and uh, it made me happy when I see that. Joe, I don't know if that's the greatest catch you ever made, but I know it's got to be the most important. By far, Tony, uh, I didn't think I had a chance for the ball when it was hit. I thought it was gone, and I turned the wrong way, and I came back into the ball, and uh, I just made a mad stab for it. Because I sort of lost a little bit of it in the sun when I first turned, and then I picked it up again. Did you have some trouble with your glasses? For a while, I looked on a replay like you may have trapped the ball against the wall, but it didn't touch it, did it? No, I didn't trap it at all. When I first turned, I tried to flip my glasses down, and they didn't pop down all the way, and they were only about three-fourths of the way down. So while I was going back to the wall, I had to hit them again, then I turned back to the ball. I had a little choke picking up out of the sun. Jim, you got another big play from your first baseman defensive-wise, Mike Hegan. That's right, and uh, you know Mike, I think, is one of the best defensive first basemen in the league. When he comes in, he makes all the plays for us. I have never seen him make a mistake. You know, I've never seen a youngster, I guess Whitey Ford, maybe Ralph Terry in our Yankee ball clubs, who came up as young young pitchers and were pitchers and not just throwers. How did you learn to spot the ball the way you do and the chain speeds like you do? Well, in high school, I had real good control. I could spot the ball, and when I came up here, they taught me how to change speeds and throw a little better curveball. And I think uh, Bill Posdell, our pitching coach, which is going to retire this year, I think he got me the most. Joe, you were a really underdog when you came into this thing and playing in the visitor's ballpark, and I think maybe that they had a little bit too much confidence. I don't know. It's up to them. They said some things, but now you're going back home with a two-game edge. That's quite an advantage. Well, I, you can't really have, ever have an advantage against a team like the Reds because they got everything. They had good pitching and great hitting, and uh, the series isn't over until the last out's made, and uh, I don't think any of us are going to take it for granted. Jim, pitching so much of uh, especially World Series play, and uh, I think you guys have maybe a better pitching staff than theirs. Your bullpens are both good, but they've got some arm problems in their team, you know, with Nolan and so forth, and hepatitis with gullet and so forth but pitching seems to be the big thing so far doesn't it that's right ever since all-star break I think we've won every game two to one three to two we never scored too many runs and our pitches I think took us this far but you know we still got to have a couple of runs to win and our hitters come through at the right time we didn't get many hits but it was just at the right moment I'm going to ask you both about scouting reports and so forth and Joe I don't know are th is this team Cincinnati pitching you about the same way that American League clubs pitch you yeah, they move the ball in and out. I mean, it's about the same as everybody pitches me. Uh, uh, the scouting reports, uh, as far as I'm concerned, have been really uh, correct as far as what they pitch to me, uh, as far as sinker ballers and uh, how hard they throw and stuff like that. But they, they've been pretty accurate. You, your pitchers have managed to keep off those first three hitters. They say that's the important thing. You did it again today. Yeah, we, got, we had a scouting report on them. We're trying to throw like our scouts told us. And I think uh, maybe they're first three hitters not looking as uh, you know they don't think our pitchers are that good and we're just showing them that uh, we're a little better than what they expect I think today they didn't think I had that good a fastball and once in a while I throw it by them and uh, when that happens you know you've got a good chance to win Joe we're going to replay that great catch what could have been a game saving uh, saving catch for Catfish Hunter I'll let you describe it 
Well, the ball was, was hit straight over my head, and I turned to my left because that's the way I stand. And I just went back straight to the wall and uh, try, uh, turned back into the, where the fly of the ball, where I think it's going to be coming down. And uh, I looked up, and uh, I was right at the wall, and so was the ball. And I just jumped up for it and uh, got my glove. You almost turned into a double play, too. Who was your relay man in that? I really don't know. I just threw the ball back to the infield. I don't know where, you know, who was out there, but I think Campy must have been. Jim, you were mentioning before about your fastball. You got off some tough situations, especially in the second inning, I believe, when you had men on base and then men on second and third again in the fifth. It seemed like when you were in trouble, you were going more with your fastball today, were you? That's right, because I know where that's going most of the time. I can spot it. And, you know, when you throw a breaking ball, a lot of times it don't break as much as you want, and you can hang it, and they can hit it out of the ballpark more easily than their fastball. Jim Hunter, Joe Rudy, thank you so much. Congratulations. We'll see you in Oakland. Thank you, Tony.